Hey, this is Matt Whitmer from Brody Precision. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at an exciting new technology that's coming to the building automation space called T1L. And what it is, is Ethernet over a single pair of wires. So, uh, a need was found for a new low bandwidth, uh, long distance, as well as short distance, uh, physical layer for Ethernet. What that means is all of the bits and data and everything that are traveling along this wire are the same as we're used to with regular Ethernet, 10 base T, 100 base T, gigabit Ethernet, all the same uh, types of information, just that physical layer has changed a little bit. We can thank the automotive in industry for this. Uh, cars nowadays uh, have like miles of wire running in them. Uh, for communications between a wide variety of different systems. And if you can cut down on the number of physical wires that are in that uh, bundle, uh, but still communicate the same information, you obviously can save a decent amount of money. So the automotive industry was the one that was really sort of driving this. Uh, and because of that, there's also this T1S, uh, which is short, um, as opposed to our T1L, which is long, where we get long distances. Um, and you will of, often ref, uh, hear these referred to as SPE, or single-pair Ethernet as a whole. The uh, version that we're going to see most likely in the building automation space uh, is going to be the T1L because of that long-distance uh, capability that we'll talk about here in a moment. So, what do we get from T1L? We get 10 megabits per second, which for our use cases is plenty of data. It's not like we're streaming video. It's not like we're passing massive files. We're largely just passing very small bits of um, information. And the L piece that I talked about before is we get 1,000 meters out of this uh, single pair Ethernet connection over uh, 10 megabits per second. Um, and with that, there's no defined cabling requirement. All we need is a single twisted pair, which means you'll be able to reuse all of your uh, twisted pair uh, RS-45 cabling um, that's run in a building uh, for this SPE uh, single pair Ethernet. The terminations for this uh, vary depending on manufacturer and um, what they decide to do. I think what we're going to likely see most of is what we'll see here in a little bit with this Honeywell controller that's uh, coming out is just terminal block. Because we're talking about just a uh, single pair of wires, uh, there's not really much of a need for anything more complicated than a simple screw terminal block. Uh, and how these compare to the regular Ethernet and uh, RS-45 standards that we are uh, used to. So we've got our 10 base uh, T1L, which is the T1L that we're talking about here. Our 100 base T, which is our gigabit Ethernet, and then our RS-45, which is sort of the physical layer for things like BACnet MSTP and Modbus. Um, we've got those listed up here in the, on the chart. And um, you can see that uh, the major difference between uh, RS-485 and this T1L is that instead of using a daisy chain like we're used to, we're doing our typical point-to-point uh, -point connections like we do with regular Ethernet. What that means is instead of having a single terminal block uh, that you're going to wire, you know, you're, you're leaving and you're entering wires uh, on your controller, you're not going to have two terminal blocks. You'll have, like we do with Ethernet, you'll have uh, one and two, and then you'll just, you know, one side will go into one, and then the other side will come out of the other. Uh, most cases, I think we're going to see controllers that have both of those. Uh, the major difference, as we, I mentioned before, is that distance, uh, the speed. We don't, we're, we're never really making use of anything more than 10 megabits per second uh, for our speed side of things. As you can see, that RS-45 was 
only up to three megabits per second. And the baud rate on a vast majority of the uh, buses out there was not even close to that. And like I mentioned, with uh, gigabit Ethernet, you're you're typically using at least Cat5 uh, cabling. And with T1L, you're using the same cabling as you would with RS-485. So we've got that single pair of wires. How do we get it back to a typical Ethernet network where we've got RJ45? Well, we're going to make use of something like a media converter, like this uh, Honeywell one. Uh, and basically all it does is it takes in our T1L connections. We have three terminals here because of uh, we can make use of a shield if uh, it's there. And we're going to just swap that over to a normal RJ45 connection. Uh, the data that's on those wires is identical on the T1L side and the uh, 10 base T in this case side. Uh, the only difference is we're changing up some things a little bit electrically so that you know we're moving over to uh, all of the wires on the 10 base T side. And like I mentioned, like this stuff, you're not seeing a lot of it yet, but it's coming. And why it matters is that you can upgrade to Ethernet based controls in a retrofit application without having to run new wires. You can rip out all of the existing BACnet devices that are there, BACnet MSTP, and replace them with something like uh, this uh, Spider 7 Unitary or Optimizer. I'm not, Donnywell is uh, changing up names here on us. Uh, I think they're going with the Optimizer name. And as you can see, it's got two sets of terminals here for T1L. So um, you could just rip out a BACnet controller and throw this in, and now you've got an Ethernet device without having to run uh, a whole bunch of Cat5 to make that happen. So um, that's it for this video. I hope that was a um, simple enough to understand overview of uh, the T1L technology and why it matters uh, because it is coming, and we're going to have a whole bunch of other videos here on that new Honeywell controller to uh, explain to you more about it. So thanks for watching, and uh, we'll talk to you next time.